Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here in TNO the last years of Europe which we're playing as the Central African Republic but we're going to talk about ruling a company. Victory? Congress doesn't know what victory is. Half the Germans army run off into the jungle to try and kill as many Americans as they can before they try to get them more than the natives do. Once you get five miles from the coast of Mozambique offend, authority has vanished. Instead you're in the rubble of the meanest dudes you can imagine. The only people who could survive two decades of war were the likes of Hans Uten. Angola's calm for now, while the rebels lick their wounds and think about whether they want to kill us or each other more. While their lackluster infrastructure continues to degrade. The Congo's madhouse with a little circus Mueller left behind scrumming either pack up and escape or toady up to our government. Washington would say our biggest problem is a half million of Germans who took off in the wilderness. But the Boer revolutionaries that started nipping at the heels in our Transvaal, the second occupation let up. But the real problem isn't going to go away so easily. It's the 4 million square miles of Africa we're ruling and the 200 million ungrateful Africans we saved from a certain German rule, our tyranny, and they call it victory. Since the flames of war has started to die down, we may now secure our hold of the continent. Get a lot of political power, because my god, we're going to need it. Um, we're going to lose political power there, which I do not like. We get more stability, though. Stability with, oh, shnikes, oh my god. Uh, figuring out local situation, it's a mess. Of course, there's much more to it than that, but... It's the only universal statement that I can uh, make about how things are in Africa. I was hard enough to get information on the place when I was stuck under the German boot, and now we have to figure out things from scratch. We're faced with a severe shortage of experts in Africa, and many of them are working with information that hasn't been relevant for two decades. Fortunately, now is an excellent time to begin working on our knowledge of the region, and understand the patchwork of warlords and governments the car is faced with. Before we begin making major decisions about the future of Africa, we need to send our officers on the fact-finding missions to determine what decisions will be best for the continent. So, oh, we just lost 18% more stability. Jesus Christ. Um, but we have all this stuff here. Uh, political stability is getting down. We don't have very good admin hold or military hold either. Um, yeah, not good. We want to increase both of everything here. Admin hold will increase, which we really want to focus on, which is only 12%. I don't know why it's so low. Military hold is a little different than normal, and then we're probably destined to lose. But uh, we'll see. Um, political stability will increase. I'm going to will increase as well, which is not bad. We'll add more to our debt, which you know, I'm not su super concerned about right now. I like the extra money. Um, we still good reserves, which wouldn't be bad either, but really, I don't want to hurt our political stability at all. Or admin hold. So both of these need to increase somehow. Or we have reserves to spare, we get more admin hold. Or we have enough money, we can also get more military hold. So maybe we should focus a little bit more on money. Oh, that's this one then. Oh no, that's will decrease our political stability, which is not good. Uh, admin hold will decrease, which is not good either. Extra fifty million dollars. Oh, I don't want to do that one. Is there anything that will increase our money while not decreasing anything else? Maybe not. Or just do this one. Just do that one. We'll see what happens. Sunrise over Africa. General William Westmoreland's left curled in the distaste and surveyed his new office. The past palatial clam pound in Leopold would have been the former home of Sir Creed Miller, and now was his including the stuff the lion heads and ivory furniture. Wasn't a fan of the hunting trophies, he explicitly forbidden any photographs of him and his new surroundings, but he had to admit that the size of the space was a benefit. The chamber was entirely oversized for workspace, with a grandeur more befitting an audience chamber than an office. I guess we'll need the space with all the people coming in. While Westmoreland didn't sound himself a king or colonial governor, he'd be overseeing a territory far larger than any of the old Rex commissariats. A Central African Republic stretched from the borders of South Africa to the frontier of Italy and East Africa, where the hundreds of former rebels and prison activists and local bureaucrats all asking for an independent homeland. America didn't style itself as an occupying power, they were a force for good, a force for justice, and independence in Africa. But neither would they be harbingers of chaos, and that was precisely what a hundred little new countries in Africa would cause. There would be freedom to manage orderly and friendly in America. It would come with some reason soon enough. No shortage of good intentions. Central African Government Will the car remain a single lone state after the OFN leaves? Not even Westmoreland knows the answer to that question. What is certain is that if we leave in this current state, the continent will collapse into a state of barbaric warfare, and the politicians won't like that one bit. Not to mention how it looks for us if we manage to leave Africa more than a mess than the Nazis did. To ensure that this doesn't happen, General Westmoreland has ordered the creation of the Central African Government. Reorganizing current military administration is something more suited to ruling the continent by bringing in the State Department officials and taking a more professional approach to running the place. I mean, efficiency will increase. 56% uh, is not bad. It's getting a little better. Expand chemical work plants. I like that, but I don't want to decrease political stability at all. Local properties, but that would decrease political stability. It's fantastic, which is not bad. Uh, we need more admin hold, though. Uh, military hold, we need to focus on, too. I have been hold a little bit long. Alright, go do that anyways right now. Screw it, why not? We have a little bit more debt, which is fine. 
not super concerned. Our deficit, though, is not looking good, though. Not looking very good. Uh, Alliance of the Jungles is for this one. Central African government, government of Africa, the Central African Army. Huh. The lessons of success. Our armed forces performed admirably in Africa. In a short period of time, we took half a continent and struck a major blow to the Nazi menace. Since the first landing in Cape Town, we learned from our mistakes and capitalism those that the enemy to throw back the Nazi menace for the first time in two decades. Of course, our spirit of defense of the continent was marred by the failures that always come with adaptation to a new environment. Now that we secure the continent, we need to begin applying what we've learned so far to the ongoing fight. We'll soon be distributing new training materials on how to operate in difficult and varied terrain. But our, and our South officers will be receiving classes on how to handle logistics in a nation with poorly developed infrastructure. With these developments, our peacekeeping forces will be better prepared to finish this war. At least hope so. Lands the jungle. Feels like I haven't seen you in months, West Merlin rumbled, only half jokingly. General William R. Pierce, head of the CARS intelligence section, had finally produced his assessment of the offense plan of midwife democracy in Africa. Pierce handed over the report to Major Slick. This ain't going to the way the Washington thinks it will. Two hours later, West Merlin. Uh, I feel a fog sitting in his brain. The MNC and the PSA for the Nazis together in the Congo, why, why won't they? This isn't like the U.S. Army will. Pierce wiped the sweat from his brow. Patrice Lumumba and Antoine Gizenga aren't just going to pledge loyalty to the Republican color today. Lumumba wants the African Republic. Gizenga wants a socialist one. Put them in a room together, and the resulting government will be so unstable you could never uh, you could sneeze and topple it. Well, we work with we can work with Lumumba. Lumumba. He's no friend of America though. He's going to want to see that the back of us and the American companies too. Pierce said we made ourselves responsible for the blowback from every ruffled feather across half of Africa. There's no good options. Westmoreland was only half listening. He understood the difficulty of the situation. He didn't need Pierce to defeat his attitude of making things worse. He just draw a few lines on, on teeming tides. Jonah stared on the pass of the horizon, the spray of the Congo Lake watering down the view of the tree line behind him. Ever since a man grows to place themselves and ultimately intertwine themselves in the fabric of the coastline, bouncing off the shore side of the Everest becomes so difficult. The Americans had eased his duties, the craters and dense fires caused by the insistent blasting downwards, creating pockets cleared away a beach where the shard gnarled roots of the mangroves could be seen under the lake, clear like water. Joe's fishing trawler hit up against the shallow bottom edges of the Congo Lake, where one could spot the brownish green rocks habitats, habitats of a newly born life. Algae coated just about everything, yet it's all still moved in beautiful, cyclonic motions as if children explore new environments. Starfish skating across the surface of the rocks. Small crabs snipping at even smaller groups of fish, traveling by whatever cracks allowed them to go. Strange biological formations, mushroom-like in the growth, clung to and breathed the underside of the rocks. Even as unholy Nazi-engineered natural catastrophe, life found a way not only to survive, but to thrive. Carefully, he picked up the elongated bony and dry fingers of a dusty metal pole with a sharpened end. Seeing his sights, a fat and heavy lungfish attempting to find escape from the claustrophobic shallow rocks. Jonas launched a spoke against the waters, beating into the very hide of the Congo Lake. Pulling back, Jonas revealed the corpse of the lungfish, now attached to the end of his pole and spraying watery blood on his fishing trawler. Pulling out a dull and ru rusty releasable knife, Jonas prepared to end the short but perhaps exciting life of the lungfish who would become his family's dinner meal. But a sight deeper down the lakeside stole his attention before Jonas could finish his duty. Glorified by the shifting water spritz of the Congo Lake, which seemed to wrap its up run and shimmering towards an industrial scale fishing trawler, Jonas's eyes were instantly drawn towards his glorious bounty. On his back was a magnificent net of golden string holding together a writhing mass of fish, practically bursting forward with enough sustenance to feed and his neighboring villages for months on end. Holding up his knife next to his near mirage of the trawler's bounty, a little idea pops into Jonas' mind. Life may yet thrive here. And, of course, we read about the Central African Army, right? No, we did not. We're not going to secure the condo of the U.S. military. Every day, more demands from the streets of the Washington and the halls of Congress come to bring back more soldiers home from the war. We'd be happy to bring the whole army home, but the problem of Africa has not been solved yet. We've got as many American soldiers as we've ever got going to have, so it's time to get them to work, training, a new force to keep the continent under control. We've already made contacts with plenty of militias that support the goals of the United States. The trick now is to get them trained into a single force that can police Africa. The Freedom Military Force. The people of Africa do, buy here to, do hereby decree and say under God's blue sky that a mocks their return sometime of the peoples of the African nation. This blasphemous and tyrannical nation of America calls forth the Congress whereupon they will attempt to slaughter methodically. Destroy any hope for the renewal of the African nation. The hammer of the Lord will fall upon all those who seek to deny the boons of representative government the sons of Mother Africa. The only men bold enough to stand up against such slavery are those in the Freedom Military Force who will deliver the people of free and holy Africa. There's a recent and a long series of letters that have been sent to the base by a group calling themselves the Freedom Military Force. All were filled with the same sort of vaguely patriotic nonsense calling for the removal of America from Africa and alternating between calling for Africa ruled by the African people and one ruled by God. First few letters have been dismissed as nonsense created by natives who had learned a half speak English and who wished to frighten Native American soldiers. Or naive American soldiers. A few even convinced that the letters had to be uh, pranked by board soldier. However, the Freedom Military Force is no longer a laughing matter. They begin to attack American operations with a gusto, uh, participating in bombing, shootings, and even the occasional kidnapping. Every letter that arrived held an attack of some sort, some move that the revolutionary group wished to claim credit or for some colonial op operation they wished to announce. The newest letter was most darning of all. Word is spread for the, uh, that the military freedom. Freedom Military Force is planning to attack the All-African Congress, given the most open disdain they seem to hold for it. 
That Joseph tried to quash the narrative after all, no matter how crazy the world lawyer is, he'd never risk such a direct assault on America. Nevertheless, the tension that this letter has created is palpable, and optimism in regards to Congress' success has plummeted. A junta built on fear blood and on the lake. The waves roared with the awe and might of the man made. Uh, sea foam built up under the pressure of Jones's fishing trawler crashed against the bow, bow. And in the still somewhat soaked bodies of Jones's makes your crew, the crystal shining blue lake water the Congress seemed to dance, the parade and march of Jones's triumph, wielded in Jones's arms with a frankly terrible, shoddily built and most likely gem rifle. A leftover from a few members of the village who entered into the local Waffen SS chapter. It had mattered to work, though. PD is scouting American seafaring vessels in the Congo Lake, at least those used for fishing or the elk or like. Proved how woefully underprepared they were for naval incursions. The Central Africans never bothered to poke America's naval might, it seems, so American shipping had grown fat and lazy off of safety. Jonas, rubbing his water scrub, unshaven chin, thought over the possibilities of what just up and taking an American book could provide him. Months worth of fish, more riches than he had ever laid his eyes on, a lifetime of prestige in the raucous power of an industrial scale fishing trawler. What same fisherman would have snatched that deal? Looking over to his comrades in arms, Jonas read their serious expressions, recalling their motives. One was an adrenaline chaser, another was looking to revive for a sickly infant. One of them, proudly wearing a de uh, deep red kerchief, was looking to take vengeance on those greedy American corporations, those who were raping Africa with its natural resources the instant that liberators had arrived. Spotting an American trawler in the hazy horizon, Jones and his crew mates gathered together their firearms, blunt objects, and make do grappling hooks. Swaying forwards and backwards, the Jones crew steadied themselves as the choppy waters beat against their attempts at balance. Spray of lake water encircled their vision, forming a murky, almost supernatural funnel towards the great steel beast waiting the oncoming struggle. At last, Jones's trawler hit up against the purposed edge of the American vessel. The crew threw up the ropes and following a surprisingly short blur of rods being against raw fish, and a few rogue shots of a flare gun, the Jones's crew were commanding the Americans. Soon after, the Jonas crew abandoned the site with a glorious prize, leaving only blood leaking into the briny depths below for whoever would chase them. And so was born a generation of the late kings into the heart of darkness. The warmth of the fire started the chattering crowds and the cheery GIs waving around their just opened champagne balls drifted through the air behind them, until being rest from their groping psyches by the chilly, merciless night. From a place of heartwarming tones, deep oranges, and the yellows of nighttime gas lights, and the dark, unforgiving blues and violets of the Congolese embrace, a scowl branded by no offended paint, set across legged at the helm of the patrol boat, skating across the Con Congo Lake's near black tides. Brass had thrown him and his fellows into the wilds in search of intel around these parts, God knows they had a fall. Hooching for the alk uncups and cold, and for what he'd come to know, the scout, just as a boy they called Young, dragged down the cigarette after a cigarette in hopes of feeling home. Freshly painted camouflage dripping down his chin, the sound of drip, 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 intermingling with the spray of the Congo Lake. Thinking back to his last Christmas in Wisconsin, just a hazy memory now, Young managed to recall the fireplace, his family, the scent of not slop, and the feeling of tinsel streaming through his hands. It was just a dream now, running a finger through his mud caked skin, it was just a leather hide now. The stress, punishment, there was supposed to be something human left, and yet they had taken everything away. Snap back to the blinding darkness by which Congolian reinforcements and writhing crowds of mosquitoes occasionally broke through to be seen by the patrol boats meandering dim lights, Young could hear snoring. Looking to his fellows, Young attempted to recall their names, or at least what everyone called them. There was a crowd called Le Hans for his infamous work with the Ost Africans. He was the only after a left who knew these parts, so they threw him in with the scouts. He never talked, though he was prone under the breath German cusses. He preferred heroin, the classical choice. Pigs there was there too. He was the one snoring. A real fat dude. He had a useful cartographer. Also an annoying but nevertheless handy dude. I always stayed so large, young wondered. LSD was his go-to. Captain of all was Leroy, a black man. He'd volunteered for the crap show to escape the South. He didn't take any drugs, instead just wore every thousand years thousand yard stare. Though they were thrown together, each of them remained as lonely as ever. Every man at an island, da young dared not to imagine what his comrades in arms had seen. Nor they sh nor shall they for you. I was a finish up the Central African government. I'm afraid I, I didn't understand your meaning, General Westmoreland. The voice of Nelson Mandela asked flatly over the telephone. Do the Americans intend to replace the three Nazi regimes with one overarching American one? It's not like that, Westmoreland sighed, roping his brow. There's nothing left behind of a state or bureaucracy in many of the former shield territories. Uh, and there are all different res sorts of resistance and guerrilla movements fighting for the place of the pie. There has to be some orderly transition I need you to tell. A transition brokered by American generals under American arms and with no space for any African at the table. I don't think Robin Island would become useful 80 for the OFN general, Mandela replied, archly. If you're so insistent that you have Africa's best interest in mind, then you can call Amin, Lumumba, and Savim B that in person with a translator. All right, Westmoreland held up his hands. Like I said, this isn't going to be permanent. I'll talk with everyone myself. All I need from you is to bring your own people together so we have good proposals when we sit down and discuss the future of the continent. A mirthless chuckle came over the line before it went dead. If you say so, general, just get with the program. Admin hole will increase. Increase. Lose political power all over the place. Which I hate, 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 hate. Increase monthly income. Ooh, training native militias. Um, political stability will increase too. Uh, gauge the economy first. If we're trying to assess the value of a sensibly run regime, we'd have everything we needed. Well kept records, competent bureaucrats, organized account books, but the records have been burned, the bureaucrats have fled, and the jungle have been shot, and the account books may not have even existed in the first place. 
Miller seems to have kept as few records as possible in the corporations I dealt with them are repeatedly denied uh, doing so. Shank has actively obfuscated most of the records, and what isn't obfuscated is so spotted and badly organized as to be effectively useless. The majority of all African records burn with the SS fanatics, and the fragments we pulled from the ashes show a reign of slave labor and chemical weapons testing. We now face the daunting task of assembling a good analysis of the African economy with nothing more than what the Rex Commissars left behind. It'll take up a significant amount of our administrative capacity, but at least we'll get, uh, be able to get Africa back on its feet. A stay at Hitler's Stadt Resort. Young. Sat uncomfortably on a juting out shaft of metal which served as a chair for its purposes. Facing pegs to breathe four moist and humid gasps of air from the obese flaps he called a neck. Young laid down the card, gave me to playing as pegs popped pills. Seeing his tired, dour expression reflecting in pegs tinted aviators, Young stood up and looked over the green, muddy waters of the Congo Lake's famous mangroves. Noticing a strange, vine coated and half sunken, white obtrusion from the jungles, Young shouted to Captain Leroy to the dog, who too had been watching the structure eagle eyed. And stood up from shaving his hair to the bow Bowie knife, whispering to himself, Hitler stop! As the boat near the collapsed resort, Pigs yelled at Hans, What the heck is this? Crowd, I thought you knew where we were going. In response, Hans simply looked away with a somewhat confused, somewhat ashamed of expression, flushing exposing flush exposing himself, itself through his tan cheeks. Jumping from the hot metal patrol boat to the flooded over docks of Hitlerstadt, Young felt his balance propose with a gyrating waves holding up this curious white concrete and glass structure. It was somewhat somehow so clean, so pure, yet overgrown with rotting vegetation and pouring with the muck of malaria and dank, rotting wood. Switching through the resort's courtyards revealed to it to be utterly looted, right bare of any valuables in its confines. Staring on all sides while unbearable swamps and bogs which would have been begging the toughest European. Young pondered how much pain must have been poured into this thing's creation. Entire hotel rooms were flooded with murky swamp water, presumably the home to some terrifying large and slithering Congo Lake fish who festered in those dark and moldy places. Seeing Hans standing still in a hallway entrance, Young ran over to bear witness to yet more horror. Right into the hallway, and the hallways connecting to it was an orgy of blood, a mob of resort occupants, maids, cleaners, and waiters, all cut down by machetes into a flowing river of organs, brain, and tissue, and gushing blood. Flies go to the corpses, who seemed to be stuck forever running or crawling away from their gruesome fate. Hans looked on with the impotent terrorist German brethren. Pushing Hans away from the site, Young led him back to the patrol boat. They were getting lost, we needed a fuel, and they needed some direction. Leroy pointed out a nearby village, and the crew nodded along to his authority. Flies to the Congo's corpse. Black man's halo. The closing walls of the Congo's labyrinth of jungle, swamps, and bogs tying themselves around the edges of Young's patrol boat. They had entered a series of narrow river riverways in a desperate attempt to locate the village Leroy had pointed out on the map. The supply of fuel rations, most important cigarettes, heroin, and LSD were slipping by the day. From beyond the wiry, snaking roots of the mangrove trees sung forth in might, and all the animal kingdom in this alien wild place. Nature and its envoys ruled these lands, as was evidenced by the ringing chirps. Growls and roars of any number of fantastic beasts who managed to survive here on the meat of those week. Of the week. Leroy spoke in a somber low tone. Everyone, look at the canopies. Lifting the heads upwards, Young and his crew noticed the rotten, skeletonized corpse of the men in SS uniforms hanging from their necks on tree branches dizzying high. Pigs took out a pistol for some target practice, only for Leroy to whisper a shout through his teeth. Put the god darn gun down, you're going we're close to a target, and clearly these fellows ain't friendly. Floating around, the riverbed became shallower until the patrol boat was routinely dragging along the boat to the rocks and gravel floor of the riverway. Coming in contact with the foreign burning sensation of their nostrils, the crew, after docking and trailing the scent, found a small blown apart collection of mud huts sitting within the grove. They wrote a man he stayed behind, lest something attempt to interfere with the patrol boat. Turned around the mud huts, which sat unceremoniously plastered up to the skin of these here swamps. Young and the crew found nothing but shredded straw and a warm cooking platter, laid over a dying fireplace coated with just scattered spices. Nabbed in a fistful of assorted fruits from a collapsed basket, Pigs made his way back towards the patrol boat, followed by the others. Singing and violent screeches emanated from the patrol boat's direction, and deity mobbed the native villagers surrounded the patrol boat. Pigs dread lingering over his visage, and knocked his way through the crowd, finding the patrol boat rushed over to its side. As two swords cracked open and leaking, Pigs made his way around to the cockpit, only to see the limp body of Captain Leroy laying on the riverbed. Skull smashed open. Young and Hans followed in Pigs' steps, stopped in shock with the realization of what had taken place. Pigs, raging, lank, were bleeding through the tinge of aviators, grabbed the shoulders of his random local child, lifted a pistol to his forehead, the fruit scattered to the mud. Pigs scream, you get what you dudes deserve, you hear me? An eye for an eye. Young yearned to stop, and the jungle shook before his consciousness could act, to make the rivers bleed. Happens. West Merlin Abrams' proposal. The German reign over Africa has ended, but their economic reign is not. The majority of the African industry is still owned by German capitals are owned by the leftover administrators, and the American people did not send their sons to Africa so the Germans could continue to exploit the continent under their rule. The U.S. military will begin to right these wrongs, and a new directive of generals West Merlin and Abrams will assume control of the African industry and resource production, and place it under control of the favorite and cooperative corporations that will manage this newfound capital in a manner that benefits the OFM. Instead of going to the pockets of closeted Nazis, the profits will go straight to the companies that vote to strengthen the OFM, of course. And we do have a cup of mint tea to keep us nice and warm. Not bad. 26%. Of course, we can't do anything here either, which really sucks. 
Economy's not looking great. A lot of big old deficit. And we have mediocre credit rating, but what else is new? Gauge in the, that there economy. Oh, we can't do that one. Uh, to find the military authorities. Only fool or madman would attempt to run Africa the single entity. We can't solve all the problems of the entire continent from Kulamane in consultation with the State Department. General Westmoreland has developed a new plan to establish local military authorities under our best officers. These smaller organizations will be able to respond to local problems much faster and be able to create greater understanding of the issues that affect the regions. Uh, the U.S. military faces a tall order in administering Africa, but by dividing the problems, we can make up far more manageable. I do want to go over here to so increase political stability, which would be nice, and also increase admin hold. So that'd be really good as well, but um, we'll see. Place difficult leaders. I don't want to do that either. Emergency training wouldn't be bad either. British demands. Government compromises? The Congress screams are bloody down. They walked, walked, and walked again. They walked and trudged and shambled all famished and wired like. Their environs and friends swarmed with them. From the human packed together, insulated rainforest, the Congo lakes, outer edges, into a never ending bog. A desolate and treeless quagmire coated with only st stretches of tar like mud. A scraped against their exposed skin, leaving a beaten raw, kicked in mud, shrilled and reminiscent of trench foot over the whole body. This was a wasteland, a transitional zone between the Congo Lake and the outer tropics of Africa's interior. Hanging over was all the blood orange sun, breaking through layers of mist on the horizon to cast over the west and dark, deep, and dark, warm tones. Young, exhausted with the point of collapse, took a seat on an arriving piece of wood, sticking out from the wasteland like a splinter lodged into a finger skin. Pixie could see with him, though the Hans remained standing. Indignantly remarking, You American dudes, I told you we should be heading northwest. Pigs, dry blood running down his chin, torso shouted back, and why should we listen to that crowd screw who got us lost in the first place? If, we, if we'd never been lost, Leroy wouldn't be seeing pouring blood and guts into a gush in the river right now. Both individuals had gone along without anything to ease the pain, and both were at their breaking point. Hans was trying his best to replicate the American middle finger, and limped away from the rotting wood providing the seating, off the horizon into the deep red fog. Pigs, friendly Lewis, but to himself repeated, the crowd was an Aus African. The crowd was an Aus African. Of course, he didn't have to know how to navigate the Congo Lake. Gosh darn it all. After taking a long, withdrawn breath, Big spoke up again. Young, uh, I don't think we'll be making it. We've got too far back to get to the village. We're, uh, we're not going to be, you know. Young stared off into the distance, the deafening silence and low, whistling winds of the hellscape, soothing his punish and flame ears, putting down his head to look out on the shifting, muddy slime at his feet. Young whispered, yeah, I figured. Feeling the outbreak of tears, Young leaned against pigs, only just noticing what was reflecting his tinted aviators. Salvation. The British demands of compromises. Admin hold will increase? Sure. The initial reports on the situation in Africa are uh, contradictory. Between the conflict with the MPLA uh, and the UNITA in Angola, the corporate vultures are singing on the Congo and the anarchy of terrorists that Hutu left behind for us. There are hundreds of small groups that have all their own interests and are unlikely to come to any sort of peaceful agreement without rapid intervention on our part. Yet, years of simmering rivalries and internal disputes will come to head far sooner than we would like. Africa is united by hatred of the Nazis. If we don't start making concessions and start stealing the cracks in the United Continent, that hatred will be turned inward on the people of Africa or worse on us. Compromise must be the word of the lips of every soldier, diplomat, administrator, or government, and all conflict must be as resolved as amicably as possible. Military invention must be a last resort. The heart of darkness. Blob the shade, scared along pigs, tin aviators, looking to their source, young felt the light of hope filling back to his withered husk of a hide, tiny outlets. But outlets nonetheless of helicopters leaning forwards and onwards through the skies, a black vibrating speck stood in the contrast with the bleeding red sun, setting sun. Clouds of red orange vapors lifted upwards from the blackening grounds, only to be swirled around upon reaching the horizons, limited by blasting winds. The young, excitedly pride of Pig's shoulders, motioning for him to call down from the helicopters. Pig snapped out of a euphoric delirium and searched for his pockets only to locate his bloody pistol. Taking this as the last opportunity for safe haven for life, Pig's aimed towards the last helicopter in line and took several shots, hoping mine might, might catch his attention. Watching, watching, watching the helicopters drag along the sun's surface. The young and Pig's broke into a furious celebration as the last in line turned away from the direction of their flock and said towards them. After it forwards, its spinning blades and machine gun turrets at last coming into view. Young and pigs paraded, dancing the dance of fan mission parts yet joyous souls, and then the bullets came crashing down. The helicopter floated above their heads, machine guns raining hellfire upon them. Mud exploded too and froze. Young and pigs ran for the muddy swamp water of the bogs. The machine guns tilted upwards, tearing through pigs' mountainous flesh, scattering blood and bits wherever. Young tried to ignore the explosions of blood at his back, diving headfirst into the Congo Lake. Digging through the layers of thick, sun hardened mud, coating the top of the Congo Lake as a film, Young broke through into a strange, almost bubbly bubble of murky, dark blue lake water. Objects and assorted particles flew by his face, but these were not of a lake bed, but instead the gadgets and technology of civilization. Firearms, ammo, watches, pieces of clothing and jewelry, rotting foodstuffs and plastic pieces. Scattered like electrical lights coming to life and then flickering back into the abyss. Displayed a magnificent, ground shakingly horrifying, miles long piece of artwork. A caravan of rotting flesh, a death march captured in perfect, perfectly still motion. Thousands upon thousands of doomed souls and nations of people dragged along luggage, backpacks, and panicked children. Thousands of souls who failed to escape the Nazis' greatest scar on the face of the earth, on the face of us all. Young looked on with a stillborn awe, drums beating closer and closer from all directions, for a single boy cannot bear the pain of humanity. 
with the warmth goes ignorance. I mean, political power, but we're going to lose it when we do these focuses with government and compromise and whatnot. Um, then we'll do the plan here, too. And we'll actually, be, I'll get some stuff done here, too. The Belgian plea. Another one of the many misses. Let's made our way back to our desk in Quillemay, and the group of Belgian corporations and plantation owners have requested we extend them the same autonomy that Mueller government had been extending them before the war. Upon further inspection, it appears that we've been extending this autonomy by simple oversight. Indeed, this was the first time it has been suggested we could ex exercise authority over them. The Belgians have almost no international sway to the current state of the country, but in Africa it's a different story. They're the main source of jobs and industry in that region, while they have a rather checkered history in their treatment of the natives, their support will be good for our business prospects. Undone German remnants? Why not? The armies of the Reich's commissars have been shattered, and the leaders have fled and vanished, but the soldiers of those armies have swarmed into the heart of the darkness, taking shelter in the jungles and mountains into the wilderness. We have surrendered in the days since their victory, choosing to take their chances with us rather than the wilderness of the natives. Others, poisoned by fascist propaganda, choosing to fight to the death. The latter category represents or presents an immense problem. Even the most conservative estimates suggest that a few hundred thousand German soldiers are still running around in the African wilderness, ready to sell their lives dearly at the cost of more American blood. Our first priority must be hunting down and killing or capturing every last one of those barbaric killers before they can disable us or shake your rule even further. An incredible potential. No oh boy, 53, 55% is not great. We need more admin efficiency, though. From calling his country's General Craig Abrams read the proposal to out aloud. We sure are lacking ambition. Westmoreland flipped through the pages, but already familiar with its contents. For centuries, Africa has been exploited for resources by its colonial overlords, and the continent has been left underdeveloped as a result. We're going to be drawing the borders in Africa specifically to ensure economic interdependence among the new countries, Pierce said. Four shoulders slumped. I have nothing to say that since I've been pushing for more local participation from the get go. That's the point, Westmoreland said. Mutual dependence forces compromise, and if compromise is the essence of democracy, then this will fit our objectives perfectly. Abrams folded his arms. Can you convince Washington? Shouldn't we have gone for fewer territories? Less regulatory burden for companies? Maybe not a start with the Africans, Westmoreland grimaced, but Africa's still lacking capital, they'll probably get a photo regardless. The room fell silent. Like so much about the car. The proposal of balanced potential, hobbled by necessary compromises in pursuit of optimistic objectives. The peers got a lost word. What did they decide to fight instead of trade? Well, let's not go there. Increased greatly. Who's got enough? Let's build a little less money, so that'll be good to do for both these, so. Uh, train native militias? Yeah, that'd probably be good too. It'd be impossible to keep control of the entire African continent without the cooperation of the natives. It doesn't mean just employment or newly built government institutions, but also complying with the transitional government participation in the many militias that have sprung up to defend local interests. We take control of the situation make these desperate forces into something with more value to our goals. The UFM possesses the finest military apparatus in the world, and the core of that is our skilled and professional instructors. We begin dispatching our best officers and the NCOs to the pro OFN militias to turn them from a CIA put in rabble into a real army. Once the place is safely under our, their control, we can finally speed up the process of bringing our boys home. Save lots of Cameroonian borders. It's ironic that the old German colony in Cameroon caused such a headache for the new ones. Since the time of Mueller, the Congo's had to deal with the border raids of terrorism from the pan Africanist ra radicals and uh, have taken over in the anarchy of Cameroon. Every mercenary in Leopold can tell stories of fighting them, and the raiders have only become emboldened by the chaos sweeping the continent. We deploy more forces to the border in an effort to mitigate the worst consequences from these raids, often directed by the same mercenaries that fought off the Cameroonians under Mueller. However, the show of force will stop them from disrupting our efforts to restore stability to Africa. The signal. Louis shook and rattled as the rotors chopped through the humid Congo's air, buffeting its occupants as they clung to their seats, dangling a hundred feet above the glittering waters of the Congo Lake. How much longer, Sergeant Julio Martinez screamed at the pilot. Five minutes, the pilot shouted back, the birds held together for thirty and hold for another five. Martinez shuddered. He did that on his last mission, chicken had yet another radio signal in the wilderness. They didn't trust the local units to not desert. He'd been lucky so far, but if something went wrong now, they'd be walking back to Leopoldville to the German remnant, the gorillas and crocodiles, and kill him first. The helicopter touched down gently on the verdant bank of the Congo Lake, and Martinez's unit panned out to the scout the campsite. It was abandoned, only a few tins of canned food and several German rifles remained. Tracks of dirt stretched out from the extinguished fire camp, as if somebody had dragged a sack along the ground into the surrounding tree line. It told a familiar story, a German remnant unit operating on the fringes of the American-controlled zones in the car, which was everywhere. If Martinez was honest, had radioed for backup, giving away the position. The girls had just beaten the Americans there. Martinez didn't stand and stick around to see if they'd be back. Screw it, I'm not going to die out here. Central African uh, Defense Forces. In order to create further cooperation with the natives and consolidate the forces of various local militias into a stronger army, the CADF is now directly under open command, but it's about a subordinate force to the Central African government. With an open training all native force, that does not require the same direct oversight as the U.S. military, will have far greater flexibility and the knowledge required to operate in Africa, greatly reducing the burden of our the armed Belgians forces. in the West. West Malone hoped the meeting would be easier. Instead, he was sweating profusely in the veranda of the Valentation Estate, melting in his uniform while Jean Schremer, the leader of the Belgians left in the Congo, played idly with the ball of rubber Kalagula. Frankly, I haven't cared about freedom or democracy on the Germans since the Gr Germans crushed Belgium 20 years ago, Schumer remarked. Tossing the ball from hand to hand, life in the Congo has always been tapping about tapping the sap. And for any successful rubber venture, stability is key. What makes you think we can provide that, Westmoreland replied testily. As the Congolese waiter laid out two bottles of beer, Schramm held him, helped himself, Westmoreland shook his head. 
A wise choice, Shram smiled. Some of them were talking about poison. Usman jumped to them. Why the heck? But look at your face, Shram laughed. Don't worry, I made sure to tell them to give you their respect, for I know you cannot. Sharam placed the rubber ball on the table as Westmoreland felt the temperature jump a few more degrees. You want the people to love, that's your problem, but like with harvesting rubber, you need to tell the people to listen. In a language they understand, and one of the many men can do that far better than a hundred of your conscripts, one way or another. Shrap, a shreem. I mean, shreem, shreem, shreem. Tapped his machete against the table, roaring with laughter. Nice. Fantastic is okay, not bad. Unchallenged, which is good, increasing the admin hole, which we still need to get just a little bit higher, and then start going up a little more, so. I'll replace difficult leaders. If we need to. Yeah, the whole military stuff is not too bad, but British demands. A great deal of British expatriates left over in the zombie region from the before the war, many of whom were influential landowners and formerly powerful politicians. They're understandably concerned about their status in Africa. The Nazis left behind a bad reputation for Europeans in Africa, in general. Of course, there's also a great deal of evidence that suggests that they were collaborating with the German government, an influence which we had no part of, uh, or we had sought to eliminate to the highest degree possible. It may even look worse to the African people if we choose to accept their offer of protection. For now, the best approach seems to be listening to and acknowledging their concerns, while making any solid commitments to protect them. Hold the All African Summit. At the Berlin Conference in uh, 1884, representatives of the Great Powers sought to impose their will on the continent, but most of them had never been visited, and were largely successful for quite some time. Yet in the 80 years since the partition of Africa, the continent has not been brought into the light of civilization as those delegates expected, but descended further into darkness and tyranny. First, the Belgian atrocities in the Congo, then the British neglect of internal struggles, and finally, the crushing weight of the Nazi Jacobin have left Africa devoid of stability. Uh, a situation which we are uh, t making little progress in improving. Oh. Oh, that's not good. Uh. Oh, well. Let's see it just a little bit. It's time to get the leaders of the continent. They're able to give us the answers we need, and the stability Africa has been deprived of for so long. It will not be an easy task to even get these leaders into the same room. Many have had disputes with others, and a few have certainly attempted to kill one another in the past. We must get them to overcome these petty disputes and organize a new Berlin conference, but not in Europe. But the time has passed, and the impulse has been wiped from the continent. We'll bring the leaders of Africa to Salisbury for the greatest meeting of the century. It looks like we exploded already. Oh, shh. Nikes. Where are we here? Uh, oh, Central African Republic. Yeah, we're all over the place now. Um, Africa exploded, but uh, yeah, we didn't have a lot of stability, but still. So it looks like, get out of here. Oh. Uh, it's the duty of the American soldiers and Africa to safeguard freedom and democracy, and that hasn't changed. The car might have been a total disaster, but our troops could salvage the situation. But securing territories will be able to form and strengthen allied regimes along the way. Might not be completely successful, but continue to fight for the liberation of Africa in enemy hands. Get out of here. Secure main cities. Well, I want to see if we can actually do this more peacefully, because I guess we're at war with even Angola and Zambia as well. The British in the south, Clifford Dupont, had illegally returned Westmoreland's called meat, going even so far as to fly into Leopoldville the day afterwards. General Westmoreland, Dupont started, energetically shaking Westmoreland's hand, it's an honor to finally meet you. Likewise, Westmoreland replied, perfunctorily. They read about what the British settlers and the former Zambia had done to keep their property intact. How they, they ingratiated themselves to the Nazis by enthusiastically participating in the South African abomination, feeding the native population of Hutu's death machine. Westmoreland handed the report detailing settler complicity and Nazi atrocities to DuPont during return to the first few pages. DuPont didn't read beyond the first page before throwing a report on the desk. I thought I was summoned to discuss future. Now there are actual details of our suffering under Hutu. You're suffering, Westmoreland raised his voice, incredulous. I didn't see a single English person change or starving those pages. If you disagree, I'll be happy to ask Robert Mugabe's opinion. That won't be necessary, DuPont quickly backtracked. I thought so, Westmoreland said tartly. Mr. Arworth, I'm going to need some names to hand over their lands to satisfy Mugabe's people. You wouldn't like to end up with the Boers, would you? Did anyone ask Mugabe's opinion in the end? Probably not, but also, I totally didn't use Khan's commands, and that's why we totally have over a thousand political power right now to do all this stuff, so. I mean, if you want to read this again, please go ahead. Um, at the building conference, of course, and such. You know, the leaders of the continent, so. But, uh, yeah, totally didn't use Khan's commands to make sure that we had fantastic political stability, unchallenged admin hold, and unchallenged military hold as well, and the economy is... Well, we're spending a lot of money. We need more money, too. The Southern Job, the man who was ostensibly the mayor of the small Zambian town, spoke with a strong English accent, as dictated in terms of the mercenary leader. He was Y, which wasn't uncommon in the region, but it was certainly a minority in its part. Central Af oh, the Central African Republic. Oh. And it was a thin to the point of being scrawny. The mercenary leader tried not to yawn. It had been a long and boring meeting thus far, and with the mayor chattering on and on, and just refusing to get to the point. Negotiations, the leader thought, were the worst part of the job. That's a beautiful town, isn't it, Yohan? The mayor asked the mercenary, sipping on a glass of whiskey. The two were sitting on the mayor's front porch overlooking the town. It was small, one could almost call it rustic, and Johan had to admit that it was a beauty hidden there. We've made our home here for quite some time now, but we found ourselves threatened. Johan set up straight, painful tension now. Threatened by whom, he asked, trying to keep the relief out of his voice. Who took for all of his flaws was able to keep the peace in the way that the Yankees can't, the mayor said. Zanu terrorists threatened us. Johan, African nationalist warlords who persecute his base in the color of our skin. We want to remove us from our homes because we don't look the same as they do. The mayor took a moment to visibly compose himself. We've heard that you and your men are the best in the business. We want protection for our town. We've worked hard to establish ourselves here, and we won't let these warlords tear us down. 
You want to take a moment to pretend to mull it over. You accept, of course. You needed the money, and the men needed to let their hair down for a bit. How much are you offering? He asked. Well, the mayor smiles almost sickly. How much does five million sound? You want to smile back? That's a sorry answer. The negotiations would continue through the night. Um, I need money. Let's see local properties. That's fine. One exploitation. I love exploitation. Uh, admin hold and increase liquid reserves. Yeah, that's fine with us. Uh, agricultural stuff. Sure. Sure. Prepar preparations for the All African Summit. West Milan was close to making his head against the wall. After all the hours spent preparing for a transition to the car to a new decolonized African state, and all the compromises and unwelcome realizations that it entailed, everything was held up by the guest list. Which I'm also have a cu cup of nice mint tea here. The State Department and diplomats from the Washington Department in Washington had thrown a fit when Abrams and Pierce had presented itself or their self or their carefully planned invitation list, much like Westmoreland. And a few months earlier, they wanted to get all the various resistance leaders in the same room together, smiling and holding hands. As no fuck effing use, well, oh boy, we Pierce that his third cigar that evening, taking advantage of a break in discussions, the higher ups want photo ops more than they want success. They want to put Lumumba and Gizenga in a room together and have them just play nice, Westmoreland said, remembering their. Uh, earlier discussions with peers. Yeah, and they want jo Jonas Savimbi and Augustino Neto to agree to power sharing in a single centralized Angolan government. Peers stared out of them into the hallway. They're all going to be talking to each other, Will. When, when, not if, this goes sideways. We're going to have the mother of all kick me signs on their backs. And drafting every soldier in America won't be enough to keep the peace. Westmoreland and Pierce sat silent in the darkened hallway for a few seconds longer before Abram sat around the corner and walked back into the room without a word. Tell the hotel we need every floor and ballroom they have. Yes, we do. Ah, no more napalm attacks. Oh, I'm sad now. Just bomb the Africans. Oh. First day, they all have a meeting. General Westmoreland, I cannot stress the importance Washington placed on the success of the meeting. The American ambassador stabbed the desk with his finger. To the nods of the assembled open delegation, some of the reports shared by the State Department have been less than encouraging. Westmoreland, it is best to hide his frustration. He wasn't sure if he succeeded. We need to begin transitioning to the Central African administration over the natives, gentlemen. Our plan will give the Africans the tools to thrive and the political framework for lasting am amity in the region as originally meant by the OFM. I hope you're right. We didn't pull all this in time and money to facilitate a disorderly transition that leaves the OFN in dust, or worse, leaves Africa open for the Japanese. The ambassador grumbled, this needs to be a day of triumph for the free world. After all, the blood and tears of South Africa. Is this clear? Crystal clear. Day two, the summit begins. With the liberation of the African people from the German masters, and for the first time in centuries, African continent faces the internationally daunting prospect of self-rule. The situation at all levels has, however, become a total spiderweb of miscommunication, misinformation, and misunderstanding over the details. Accordingly, in an effort to formally begin talks about the future of Africa and untangle the mess left to us by politicians at home and our own generals, this morning saw the opening of a month-long conference in the city of Harare. Invited representatives of all of the nations, as well as a delegation of U.S. senators and several generals, including Westmoreland and Abrams, in an effort to bring together resistance and political leaders from across Africa for the talks, the African delegation included Robert Mugabe, Idi Emin, Joseph Desire and Mobutu, Jonas Savimbi, and Nelson Mandela and Patrice Lumumba. Your efforts have ended in disaster. Almost immediately, anger erupted from the African delegation with General Westmoreland accidentally welcoming them to Salisbury, the former colonial name of the city. It got a lot be little better as talks began, with many African delegates demanding to know why they're not already free with the supposed liberation of the continent. The intended month long conference finally collapsed during lunch when an apparent miscommunication caused MPs to refuse General Amin, Amin entry to the bathroom on the grounds it was for whites only. Immediately, the majority of the African delegation stormed out, stating that they would not be attending the rest of the conference. Where the situation is at all salvageable remains to be seen. It's a disaster. The all African disaster. Oh boy. The conference hall was littered with papers and placards, tossed carelessly aside as a space emptied of every bit but the Americans on the stage. The American ambassador's face was paler than snow in the mo and at speeches and stupefied, watching the Central African Republic fall in real time. Or fall apart. Everything that could go wrong had gone wrong. The hot flash of the anger of uh, Robert Mugabe's eyes as Westmoreland had convened the conference in Salisbury, not Harare. The fear that erupted when MPs from Alabama denied Adi Amin, of all people, access to a bathroom. The accusing Sarah Ma Nelson Mandela had thrown the Americans when he had fused been last to surmount. You sit here on your podiums and in your finery and presume that you all know what is best for Africa. Do with your plans what you will, but no, we have waited long for freedom, and on our terms, and no one else's. Damage control is the only thing that mattered now, Westmoreland thought. Abrams was busy evacuating the open representatives, and Pierce was checking to see if the local situation was salvageable. Pierce turned back on stage's gate tents. A few of the delegations are still in the hotel. We might be able to work with some of them. We better choose quickly, because everyone else is going to start pointing guns at us real soon. Where diplomacy fails, we can put the focus on all African disaster. If we act fast, we can still save this abomination of a project. Oh... Memento Mori, the clock is ticking, but it's still possible to postpone the death of the car. Certain political decisions, certain policy choices will push a deadline further and buy on the OFN just a little bit more time to enact their plan. Oh, crap! There's more here? I didn't even know that. You know what? Huh. This would be interesting to do. All three of the African regions need to be enthusiastically willing to negotiate with the OFN. Ooh. You know what we could do? 
We could separate this into two more episodes, where one way we'll go with Standard Ground. Maybe, or maybe not, maybe not. Because this is one, Standard Ground. Or maybe, yeah, we do it with two A's. Requires all three of these, so you know what? I think what we'll do here, one final blow, down with the enemies of America, give it to our allies. I think we'll end it here, and the next episode, maybe we'll go with Standard Ground as well, and, and or finding another way. That's interesting. I like this. This is very interesting. Even though we use Consequence to get to this point, that's still okay with me, so. I didn't think this I would have another episode after this, but we'll see. Hey, you know, if you enjoyed the video and how we totally didn't cheat to get to this point for the Central African Re Republic, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we continue to try to expand the GDP, lower the inflation, and destroy or get rid of at least some of the debt to GDP ratio. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your Central African Republic. Day.